In this camp for newbies, we're checking out Emboss in Fusion 360, a new tool I've just added, which allows you to do text like this on a curved surface. It's incredibly cool and powerful, and I'm gonna show you how I used it to make this simple lens cap dust filter for my brand new streaming setup. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another CAD for Newbies. I know it's been some time, but thanks for being patient. This is a tool I used to use all the time in SolidWorks when I was at uni, but it's something that's only just recently been introduced into Fusion 360, and in my opinion is worthy of a of video just for itself, because it really does add so much functionality to the platform, and that's the emboss tool. You may know the embossing tool under another name such as Wrap, but basically this is how it works. You take a sketch, and you take a curved surface, and then the software will take that sketch and wrap it around the surface to emboss, which adds detail outwards, or deboss, which cuts into the material, to give you a result like this. And the reason it's so important is because it wraps a sketch around, which means when you have text, it doesn't distort. So let me show you what I mean. So what I have here is just a simple shape with a curved surface and a flat surface and some simple text in a sketch. And I want to use that sketch to extrude into the shape to result in readable text. Now, when it comes to just the flat extrude, incredibly simple. If you haven't seen my video on extrudes, by the way, highly recommend checking that out. It's a fundamental for 3D modeling. But when it comes to the curved surface, what are our options? Well, let me show you a few ways I used to have to do it before the emboss tool was introduced. First is to just do another extrude. Now, this will work for some things, but not others. And text is a good example of where it just won't work very well. So I'll grab the, the text here and do just a straight blind extrude like this, uh, just as an example, and you can already see the issues. Now this is taking that text and from the front, sure it looks great, but from the side, it's cut down the same distance all around. So this L is very deep, but the T is very shallow. Uh, and that's not going to work for most people's applications. So another option, which again, I go into detail in the extrude video is to change the extent. That, that determines how far it cuts into the object. So we can change the extent to the actual object surface and then change the offset by a certain amount. Let's say minus two, like that. And then say, okay. First red flag is some of them, some of the profiles failed. This is something I get all the time when I try to do extrudes like this with text. I don't know why, it just doesn't handle them. But you can see the issue is it's starting to skew. Uh, the X is stretched like that. Uh, the A is stretched. The, the letters that are at the front of the curve are fine, but as they go around, they start to distort. And this is the biggest issue when you use a flat plane sketch and you try to just punch it down onto a shape using a standard extrude. However, if you really, really want to push it and take a flat sketch and punch it through a curved surface, doesn't matter what curved surface it is, you can do it using the split face command and surfaces. So what I did here is I took that sketch and I've done some extrudes in the surface workflow, which gives us the zero thickness cuts that I can then use to do a split face command and I can choose the face I want to split. And then I can choose all of my splitting tools, holding down control to select all of them. You can see why this is definitely something I'm not going to miss doing, but here you go, select all of them like this and then say, okay. Now that we've done that, we can tediously select each of the cut faces and give them a manual push pull offset like this and then say okay. But again, look how distorted the S is. This is completely useless for text. So thank goodness we have the emboss tool. Let me show you how easy it is to use. Instead of any of those tedious workarounds, all you need to do is have your sketch, again, sample text here. You go to create and then emboss. You select your sketch profile, in which case I'll select my text and you select which faces you want to emboss or wrap that text around like this. And as simple as that, you can see it's curving it around to conform to that new surface. And you can change the depth. You can change if you want to emboss it, which will bring it out of the surface, like doing an extrude, or you can deboss, which is like an extrude cut into the surface to a certain depth. And then we can say, okay. And just like that, look how much better that is. It's completely readable text. It's not distorted in any way. It's wrapped around the surface. It's just as good 
as the flat extrude. It's just as clean and readable and I'm, I'm so stoked it's now a feature you can easily access in Fusion. So how about another example? Here I have a cone and a cone will, what's well, truncated cone, will also work with the emboss tool. So again, we have some text here, but let me just show you what the extrude will actually do using the extrude from a surface, from an object. And using the extrude to object command again from the front, it looks perfect. But if you go to any other angles, it's clearly not. You can see the further it gets away from that front plane, the more it distorts. And that's gonna make a real pain for you when you wanna make readable text or you wanna keep a logo or similar without distortion. So let's try the emboss tool instead, just like that. So again, we get a little bit of distortion because it needs to conform to the surface, but we get perfectly readable text. Something I do find quite neat with the emboss tool is you actually get quite a bit of freedom to where the emboss or deboss ends up. So here I have it selected. You can actually choose to position it on that surface. You can move it up and down. You can move it left and right. So this is like way more freedom than you normally have with an extrude because it knows it's kind of conforming to a surface. It might not end up exactly where you, you have predicted because from that plane, it can be quite challenging. So it gives you some, some transform freedom, which is really quite neat. Um, and something I haven't seen before. I don't think the, the SolidWorks version of this tool had that. So you can easily put it into place like that. You can go back in, it's fully parametric. You can go back in and change it as you wish. And that's really cool. However, the biggest power move that this emboss tool has over any of those other methods is wrapping text so far around that it can loop back on itself. And you get details like this, where it's like, make his muse right around the object. You know, that's almost, almost 270 degrees of wrap right there. And you can wrap all the way around until it actually ends up back where it started. However, you can't, ex can't go beyond that. You can't wrap more than 360 degrees around an object. Otherwise it will fail. It will be like your, your geometries are intersecting. Can't do that. So let me show you how to figure out how far you can push the text before it starts intersecting with itself. And it's very easy. You just find out the perimeter of the curve. And you don't even have to do any calculations to do this. Fusion will do it for you. You want to go to the inspect tool and measure. Then you select the curve uh, edge like this, and it will show you the length, 303.355 millimeters. So I can comfortably make my details 303 millimeters long without them self intersecting. So let's just test that out here. I have my text and I have a construction line here. Let's add dimensions and 303 millimeters is the, the, the furthest I know I can make my details without them self intersecting. So I've got Maker's Muse here. Let's just add some exclamation points right up till, okay, can't get away with that one. Right up till I know it's gonna reach the end of that line and I know it's gonna wrap around almost completely. So here we go, makers, muse, and then exclamation points right up to the M starting again. So it goes right around the object and you could not really do this before this tool was introduced. It was such a pain to do stuff like this with text. So that's really cool. But there is some limitations with this tool and you might've already picked up on them. It only works if the surface is a cylinder or cone. Uh, so what I mean by that is if you took a cross section of this cone, for example, like the original sketch I did, this line is flat. It's straight. It's completely flat with no curves. The emboss tool will not work on a sphere or a curved surface that is not completely flat in its cross section. So to give an example, it will not work here. I can't use the emboss tool in this circumstance. This object was created with a arc as the outside profile. So in its cut through profile before you do the, the revolve, it's a curve, it's an arc. So that gives us this curved surface. You cannot use the emboss tool, at least not right now on this curved surface. And to prove it to you, what I have again is just some text here and I want to go to create and then emboss. I can select the profile fine, but I cannot select that curved face. It's only letting me select that internal uh, cylindrical face and it will totally emboss to that, no problem but it will not let me select the curve. So you cannot use the emboss tool, at least currently on a curved surface that has a curved cross section. If you did want to conform text or a logo or other sketch details to a curved surface currently, you can use the other two methods I mentioned, which is either using the extrude function or using the split face function using surfaces. And it will work and you can get details like this, which looks really cool, 
But again, the further you go from the center of that sketch, the more distorted it will be, which means you might have to do hacky things like offset planes at certain angles to try to minimize the distortion. It's not ideal, but again, it's a workaround that you might need to use. So with everything I've shown you in this video, it should be pretty easy to figure out how I've made this lens cover. This is essentially the emboss tool with text wrapped around, but I've done one extra little thing. I've used the rotational pattern tool to take one of my embosses, which is this one here, and then pattern around three times to end up with this really cool text detail, a uh, very complicated surface with minimal effort, really. Uh, I also have my logo punched on the bottom here using an SVG. Uh, I have a video here on if you want to learn how to import SVG files and punch in that detail. Again, a great way to get uh, complicated shapes into Fusion. And you can also use that along with the new emboss tool to conform your logos to a curved surface, which is even more powerful. So what I essentially did here is took some text, moved it into a position where I was happy, added a few extra details like these little little lines here, and I figured out what was one third of the perimeter of the overall shape, and I entered that in here, 63.637, which is just, my, I just divided the perimeter by three, like that, you can use calculations directly into your dimensions. And then with the emboss tool, ended up with a result like this, which is very clean, but a little bit boring. There's still a lot of uh, flat surface that doesn't have any detail. So to make it a little bit more interesting, we'll use the circular pattern tool, and that's under create, pattern, circular pattern, and we're gonna do a feature type pattern, select the emboss we just did, and then under axes, make sure you can see them. If you can't see them, your origin might not be ticked. So make sure origin is on for visibility. And then we'll select that center origin there, which is the, the Z plane, how I've got mine set up. And then quantity three, you could go more. Um, it doesn't actually seem to mind self intersecting at this stage, uh, but three is what I designed it for with the adjust compute option. And then it might take a bit, it's fairly CPU heavy doing these embossed commands, but there you go, you've got text all around this object and it's good to go. And you can easily edit that text as you like. You can go back in fully parametric. I'm really happy with this tool and I hope you've learned a lot in this video. So thanks for watching this Cat of Newbies video here on Makers Muse guys. And here's a little bit of bonus content. This is the CraftBot dashboard for the Flow CraftBot generation printers. I'm currently reviewing it right now, but this is a complete online interface for the printer. So I have it set up downstairs, it's ready to print, but I'm not even gonna bother going downstairs. I can do everything through this interface. So I can go to File Manager, then I can go into my computer and select the G code I've already sliced, and then I can just select that G code, and then start printing. And then you can visually see the printer start warming up, so you can see that the print head and the bed temperature, and finally, if you want to just make sure it's not failed, you can go to the built-in camera, which will show it during the print. So that's something to look forward to on this channel, the review of the CraftBot Flow XL. Uh, it has taken quite a while because there was a few, few hiccups with the initial machine they sent me, but now it's working like a treat. And I do enjoy the fact I don't even have to go downstairs to the cold workshop right now. I can just run it from my computer. And I thought I'd just take the opportunity to show you that in this little video. So thanks for watching guys. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later. Bye.